quick slurp of tea and then we'll get on with the the flywheel and the ignition coil. Just point out here this copper strip here. That obviously comes from the bolt there, so it's the earth. So it's important to have that clean and be aware of it. These get really mucky in here. So make sure your ignition unit is very clean and all that's nicely cleaned out before you start. We've covered flywheels in several videos. We'll just do it again briefly. That's a taper, quite a steep taper. There's a taper in there, there's a key way, there's a key in there, and there's a key way there. So it's self-centering. It's quite accurate this. So you just pop it on, don't push like mad. And at some point, there. The key way, the key drops in the keyway and it all drops onto the taper. Now a taper is an engineering way of getting something accurate. Pops on there, it locks on there, and it holds it very accurate. If you've got a parallel shaft, then the slightest bit of wear and you can get rock. With, with a taper, it just tightens up. Then the next thing to do is to put the nut on there. And we have to lock the, uh, the cylinder to get that tight. Which of course, we use start cord again. So a piece of start cord and you bend it in two. We just want the piston halfway up. Because we don't want the, the cord come pushing out through the exhaust port which is just here so you can push the cord in and straight out the exhaust which might not do the rings any good so we'll stick the start cord in there and that's locked the piston And then we'll just tighten the screw up, the nut up. It needs to be tight, but none of this white knuckle stuff. You know, where you're pushing so hard that all your knuckles go really white because you've stopped the blood flow and you're about to break everything. That's tight enough. Turn the engine backwards. We said no, turn the engine forward like that, and of course, the piston goes down, releases the cord. So that's the flywheel in position. Now we've got the now we've got the ignition unit. Now I've cleaned it all up, and there's the two cables here that's the earth. And that, that's, of course, the, uh, effectively the live terminal for the on-off switch. And of course, you get loads of muck and dampness between there, packed in there, between there and the earth. So half the time an ignition unit doesn't work is because that's all packed out with muck and it's been raining maybe and got a bit wet and all that lot and the wet gets in there and it just shorts out. So make sure it's clean. So you know, take your starter off and clean round there with an airline and goggles or something like that at regular intervals. So I'm just going to fit that. So there's the ignition unit in place. And it's not tight. And we've got two thicknesses of paper here. So we just move the magnets round to there. Click. Did you hear that? the ignition unit then pulls forward. So then tighten the nuts up, the screws up. And continue. Take the paper out. Now, 
roll forward and see, make sure nothing's actually touching. If it's contacting or scraping, then something's wrong, but that's fine. Okay, so that's the ignition unit in place. Just check those. I may have said this before, but um, the muck round there is a pain, and you get a build-up of muck between the flywheel and these faces here. And I'm sure, over time, it pushes the ignition unit back away from the magnets. So not what with damp and loads of muck and it being moved away. No wonder uh, they seem to pack up from time to time. So the next thing to fit is this. It just pops in there whichever way. We'll work out which way in a minute. Yeah. And there it goes. And uh, this helps with the the XP bit or the pressure bit, the turbo, and it holds all the the cables and HT leads and stuff. I'll just bring your attention to this thing here. It's an air inlet that goes through into the carburetor box. Uh, so there's a slot up there. So it's a bit like a turbo. The the fan blows air along there, and the muck shoots out sideways. So it's a pre-cleaner and it pressurises the air a bit. And there's a pin there. Some of them there's two pins, some of them there's one. There's a pin there and it fits into a hole here. So when you're fitting this, it's a bit fiddly. I keep saying that about chainsaws, don't I? So I'm just going to fit it now and then you can see how it goes. Okay, so I've got it in place. It's very thin prone to damage. You notice the control wires come along here, there's a clip there, they go in those two little channels, there's a clip there, and the HT lead goes along there like that. So now we can put the recoil starter on. And then I just have to dig out a screw for there and a screw for there. So the um, the control cables from the ignition unit come up through that hole we pointed out earlier and then the earth comes along and puts on this spade connector here and then the the other wire the the spade connector on the end just slots in a slot there a plastic slot and then that's part of the earth if we can see there's the top of the spade connector just back there and here is the the spring from the earth so that is on and that is off where that little spring shorts out with the connector on the end of this cable on off there we go